Today we're going to be talking about the basic setup for 50 pips a day. Stay tuned traders, we'll be right back. G'day traders, I'm Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. It's Monday, it's the beginning of the new week. Today we're gonna to be covering basic setup each day for 50 pips or more a day. We're gonna talk about some questions that have come up regarding when to go to break even. We're gonna talk about some differences in the gold versus the pound and the euro, but how the simple concepts apply in any market, including indexes, uh, shares, whatever that may be, we're going to be just reviewing our basic setup with timing window, the importance of the timing window, the three things that markets do, understanding stop hunts, and then looking at the different factors to consider as we head into the setup each session or each day, depending on where you're at in the globe, and just looking at some really simple concepts and applying the three things that markets do to understand if you can be an in a move to the higher the low in the stop hunt and what you will look for if you are at the higher the low for a potential reversal trade as well. Before we do that though, again, I'd like to say thank you to everybody. Again, a ton of questions, comments, feedback. We're gonna hammer home on a couple of points today that have come up as well in some of the emails. We're gonna dispel some myths. Uh, we're gonna clear the air on a few things as well. But before we do that, again, if I could get everybody just to take a second and Hit the like button. Again, that's made a big difference to the channel. A lot of new subscribers and YouTube recommending those videos and a lot of feedback from new traders wishing that they had had the opportunity to have some simple steps prior to the money that they've spent, which we're gonna talk about today, and the courses that they've taken, which have led them into more frustration. So let's get started. Again, we talk about the importance of the timing window. I'm going to just mention something here. We talk about the high and the low, market opens, and round numbers. Now, if people send me emails upset that they've paid $5,000 for a course, and I'm telling this information for free on YouTube, it's not me that you should be upset with. And if, if you are happy with the course that you took and you were making profitable trades, it wouldn't matter what I was talking about. But if you think that some somebody has just figured out the concept of high and low market opens and round numbers just in the last 10 or 15 years you need to go back and le read jesse livermore's book that information is as old as markets it's been going on since the beginning of time so i'm sorry if you spend five thousand dollars on a course and you should go back to that person he or she whoever you bought it from and actually speak to them because if that course delivered or if you have not followed through, you need to take responsibility for your own decisions and actions. Again, I talk about what I do here and all the things that I've pieced together from lots of different sources, but the high and the low, market opens and round numbers is not a new concept and it is not proprietary information. So to understand that properly and to shift your thinking from retail to smart money, again, we draw a box, we talk about working from the high and the low. Smart money works up here and down here. Now again, you could be entering in at the low of the day for a trend trade, okay? But there are certain behaviors that we'll see the smart money do before they shift the market. That's called a one, two, three. And again, I'm sorry to disappoint you. That is not proprietary information. That is as old as markets. A one, two, three has been around since the beginning of markets. So if you feel that somebody has sold you that and it was their proprietary information, I'm sorry, but it's not. So the basic setup comes back to some simple concepts. We talk about where is the money. If you understand this and you understand about not trading inside and using all these indicators and different things, we are looking for opportunities for our trade setups here and here. And in between, this is called our risk reward. So in Asia, for example, today we have roughly 25 to 50 pips of from a high to a low. By the time they've gone up, made a high, come back down, made a low, our risk reward can expand over the course of 
each session. So we may go from Asia to London and our range again may expand. We talked about expanding the range, expanding the range, and then trending. Now we get into our next session. So Asia may be our low of the day. London may expand the range up and come down. So we, we might have worked the high, worked the high for our M formation. Now we have a high and a low for the day. So our risk reward can keep increasing. But the basic setup is always about the high and the low. We may have a simple setup where they just make work the high, they break the low, they pull inside and they trend. So again, I always keep emphasizing, if you are inside of the high and the low, you're inside. People keep asking me, do you change your high and low when New York starts? Or is yesterday's high important? Yesterday's high and low are important. When the day opens and you're inside of yesterday's high and low, you're inside of the high and the low. But you may also be inside of the high of the U.S. session and the low of the day. So that most recent high, we, we again ask ourselves, where's the most recent profitable trade? So you may have a pin that goes up here, but you may have had a trade that occurred 25 pips below there, and that may be where the market is going to move to, which comes back to our next point. When the market is about to open, and we're looking at our round numbers, 50s and double zeros, quarter levels typically will be an extended stop hunt, we then look at our pattern of the trend to determine are we in a range, a range bound market? Are we, are we already in a breakout, possibly of a rectangle? We saw a small rectangle form at the beginning of Asia, a one hour high and low prior to the session open. The first bar of Asia, of the open, breaks the high and the low. We have a larger rectangle. So we have our rectangle that's formed at the low. That's a breakout. Breakout pullback, continuation for 40 pip move. So again, the pattern of the trend and then understanding the highs and lows that are in place. Do they represent four hour highs and lows? Are we inside of a one hour bracket? Are we down low? Are we up high? Are we inside or breaking the low or high of the previous day? These are all critical information. So you need to be able to process and determine that. Now typically it's gonna be one. One of those. You may be at the low of a day, which obviously, if it's broken, will break the four hour uh, bracket as well, which obviously we talked about in the last few videos. That triggers other time frame traders into the market 15 minute, one hour, four hour, one minute, the whole bunch, five minute. And understanding then, of course, on the opposite side of that four hour or one hour high, we have stops in place. So the basic setup is where is the money? Where are my highs and lows? Are they one hour, four hour? Are we inside of a previous session's highs and lows? When we are going into the open of the market, are we already in an existing move? Because then we can see that move capitulate 25, 40 pips, taking out stops, but also putting in possibly a peak formation high over the next 15 to 30 minutes. Again, we talked about uh, in that first 45 minutes, roughly, we will have a high and a low or working one side for a possible reversal. We saw an example of that on Friday in the London session. The market went up for 45 minutes, roughly 30 to 45 minutes, working the high, working the high, working the high, three pushes, rolling over with our M pattern, dropping 50 pips. But it was also a 25 plus pip move. Uh, in the third minute of the open of that session off of 50 back to the high hitting stop. So again, understanding the distance from your highs and lows to the entry of a trade. So if you're going to get in it, if you have a high that's at 78, you want to be targeting a minimum of 25 pips. Well, then you do the math, including your spread possibly of where you need to be filled if the market sets up accordingly for you to enter that trade. And again, we talk about a one bar stop. One of the next questions that has come up a lot over the weekend is when do I go to break even? There are two situations that I consider to be my reasons to go to break even. Now again, there are different setups that this will not apply to, but typically speaking, when I have broken from my trade area through a low level, once that level is broken, especially if it's a quarter level, I will go to break even. 
The second scenario is at the end of a 15 minute cycle. So again, understanding that if we're in a move at the beginning on our one minute charts, if it's gold, sometimes the pound and the euro will offer very similar setups on the one minute charts at major round numbers after stops have been hit. 15 minutes of movement in a strong move, I will be at break even and possibly already be out with my profit target hit. The, the other scenario is that we may be in a 50 to 75 pip move on the one minute chart on gold and that now is where the 15 minute trader is getting in for their 25 to 50 pip trade. So at the end of that 15 minute bar, again, the assumption in that trade thesis is that the next 15 minutes is going to continue or blow through that level. Then at the end of my 15 minute cycle where I've entered in, I want to be looking to go to break even. And again, that will usually be in a strong momentum move. Now there may be trade opportunities where the market has put in a peak formation high or low and it goes into consolidation inside of that peak formation for 15 minutes, 15 to 21 minutes roughly, one and a half, 15 minute cycles before it continues, sometimes maybe 30 minutes. That happens sometimes. Uh, where they'll come back into that trade if you were to go to break even and get stopped out. I do not use trailing stops. I'm all into my profit target or the timing window expires. And again, as I've mentioned before, if my profit target is, you know, below or uh, outside of double zeros or fifties and, and I'm entering in and the market is meeting resistance or at the higher low of a day and I've spent 15 minutes around that level without my target being hit or less, I will exit that trade and lock in whatever the market has given me. So again, the basic setup is understanding that the high and the low at some point will get hit. So if you're not in that initial burst or in that movement and gold typically will move quite, quite uh, regularly right in that first 15 minutes, if you have not gone to one of those levels, but you've broken an hourly, you might be inside, you've broken an hourly level, again, is there an already an existing move in place? But if you're not in that move, they will eventually get to one of those levels. And when they do get to the higher to the low, especially if it's in that first 45 minutes, that's when we can look to identify possibly our triple top M formation, which again, we could have three pushes for an M, we could have an extended M, we could have a shortened M, so again, these are the scenarios. We could have a peak formation and then a lower double top. We could have our extended W for the reversal. We can have a shortened W for our reversal. Uh, again, after a peak formation low. So typically you'll have a pin. The market will come back into that pin again and then a, sec a third time for our W. And again, sometimes you'll even get a, a, a three push pattern reversal where they engulf that lower structure pull back inside and reverse, especially at the open of a 12 candle window. So high and low, timing window, market opens. Sometimes the equity market will be the stop hunt or the breakout. But on gold, we typically will see a 25 pip move minimum in that first hour. Uh, and round numbers, double zeros and fifties. Again, we talk about where's our 50 pip box and on gold often it's, it's a hundred pip box over the course of three sessions. And obviously when we have a big day, a big range breakout for a measured move, we can be looking at 300 pips, three 100 level uh, incremental levels of rise or fall, or 50 pip boxes for uh, three levels of rise or fall. But on most of the major US dollar pairs, we'll typically be looking at 25 to 50 pips as our uh, levels of rise and fall. So hopefully that makes sense. Don't complicate things. Again, high and low round numbers, timing window. If they go outside of that timing window on the four hour rotations to the higher to the low, I will, I will look for opportunities that present there when they go to the extremes. Because as we talked about in the other videos, once they trigger those other time frame traders, if, is, if it is a false break reversal, we could be looking at a reasonably decent five or 10 to one risk reward trade opportunity. So again, just to rehash, no secret guru codes, no proprietary information, high and low of the day, timing window, round numbers, stop hunts, stops get hit on the basic setups. So we have our range, 
expand the range, expand the range, bring it back into contraction, continue the move, trend it, whatever that may be, and the gain that comes back to the three things that markets do, anything outside of that is, is complicated. So keep it simple, stay disciplined traders, stay focused. We're gonna have some huge opportunities again this week. And again, whether it's 15 minute charts on the pound or the euro, one minute charts on gold, using 15 minute and one minute charts on the pound and euro, major round numbers, once stops have been hit, if it's a trend trade, there'll be a, a pull back into that move for a continuation and typically into that timing window. If you don't get that in London for the pound or for the euro, think big picture. This may be a New York session trade. It might move 25 higher, but now you've got a 50 pip box. So now you're potentially targeting maybe a measured move of 50 pips or more, or a reversal trade of 50 to 75 pips. Simple things like that. So again, thank you for a ton of great feedback. Keep it simple traders, start the week on a strong note. Keep it simple, do all the little things right and the big things will add up. Discipline equals freedom. Have a great trading session and may the markets go with you. Good day traders, Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. Continuing our discussion, we're talking about the basic setup. We're looking at Friday on gold. And again, before we get to our colored uh, 12 candle window, uh, the Asian session, uh, just simple things. We mark off our high and our low. Uh, again, we've broken the, the previous day's low, which we now know has triggered other time frame traders into the market, four hour, one hour, etc. As we head into the open of our session, we know that our one hour stops are below here, as well as our um, low of the day uh, scenario now. But also, we have one hour stops above this doji bear candle right here. So again, understanding the simple concepts of triggering other time frame traders into the market, uh, hitting stops, whether that be breakout orders, uh, stop loss orders. So somebody shorted the market here, maybe they're holding on for the swing, the market comes up just before the Asian session opens, hits the stops, triggers breakout orders on the one hour traders where we know they will have stops below the low of that hour. Uh, we also have a lower swing high, which again, coming back to our the higher low, we now have geometry. So we have a false break reversal right at the beginning of the session, right off of 50 for a one push, two push, three pushes down through the stops, stop hunt to the low of the day on three pushes. And again, just reinforcing this is, this is like, you know, three pushes have been around since the beginning of market. So if you feel that that's proprietary information, I think uh, you should go get Edwards and McGee, read Jesse Livermore's book, uh, find some old charts from 100 years ago. It was there in the beginning. It'll continue to be there. So we have the lower highs also. We have the pin hammer. And again, understanding the timing window. This is at the end of 15 minutes. So our initial basic setup Right at the beginning, we hit, we hit stops, off round numbers, and then we have a stop hunt to the other side of the range for three pushes, culminating in a bullpen hammer off of 75 at the low of the day. So again, there's opportunities down, and I know that traders messaged me and told me they got 40 pips down and 25 up, uh, 25 down, 25 up, all kinds of different scenarios. They took the money out on the way down, and they got back in going long. So if traders miss the short trade because of the initial explosive burst, so again, understanding that on the stop hunt, you may have been prepared to trade the break of this small bull candle. Uh, again, this is a performance activity. I don't apologize for people uh, getting upset about missing trades. You're not missing anything. It's an opportunity to get better. The market is not here to uh, feel sorry for you. It is not going to feel sorry for you. It is not going to pandered to you. It's a performance profession and you need to get better. But the opportunities are here every single day, every single session for 25 or 50 pips. So don't get frustrated. Uh, don't get angry. Uh, get better. Uh, you, you, you have no one to do. You have no, no one to be accountable to except yourself. Take responsibility for, for continuing to get better. Uh, don't blame the market. Don't blame your you know, system or your your friend or your mom or your dad or your husband or your wife, look in the mirror and get better. Uh, again, risk reward, uh, one bar stops. If you're in the market, you put your stop in, you put your target in, 
Uh, 15 minutes go by. There's a pin hammer at the low of the day. Uh, we're looking at a possible 15-minute reversal, maybe 30 minutes. 15 to 30 minutes in one direction, 15 to 30 in the other. That's one hour. We hit the stops. The market uh, goes three pushes to the low of the day, gives us a pin hammer off of 75. I'm thinking at least stop hunting to the high of this first pullback, which takes us up to the first quarter. That's a 25 pip trade. And again, there's you know 40, 80, um, 75 pips, whatever, in the first hour, and you're done. Uh, but again, understanding the simple concepts, hitting stops, hitting stops, pulling it back inside, and then potentially continuing a move or reversing and trending. Uh, and again, often uh, by this point, ideally, I will lock in pips if I've, if I've been in these trades and I will walk away. I don't care what happens. I know there's other trades. Um, you can trade them. But it's also important to understand that if you're taking money out each session, it adds up. So we head into the next session. We have a peak formation low in Asia. The market stays sideways and eventually breaks out in the gap time. And again, we go back through the same process. We have a high. And going into the session, we have a low. So again, we're between 50s and double zeros. We, we talk about round numbers. Where's my 50 pip box? Where is the money? Who is in the money? This trader who has shorted it is in a three push move to the low, they give a higher low, trapping people early prior to the market opening and then hit the stops for the third push. Again, peak formation high, one push, two pushes, and then right off the initial burst, a one, two, three pin hammer at the open. And again, you're not gonna get all these, these are you know, uh, sometimes fast explosive moves, but then understanding that okay, a big candle like this, first thing I do is draw a line. Somebody's gone long here. They're going long on the close of this candle, chasing the move. 15 minutes, they hit the high, pull it back. Second 15 minutes, they hit the high a second time, and they have not gone through the double zeros yet. Pull it back and hit it a third time in the third 15-minute cycle, understanding that this trader who's filled roughly at 84, 85, still his trade is not going anywhere after 45 minutes. The market culminates that third push on a one, two, three bear doji. Some traders entered in early off the round numbers. It pulls back one more time before engulfing and giving us our M structure at the high of the day. Now again, we know there are stops below the beginning of the session which is a one hour low but also we have four hour lows in the gap time because we also have four hour traders and one hour traders triggered at the break of that candle in the middle prior to the session opening so the beginning of the Europe London window is the beginning of the new four hour cycle on gold for me I know other traders say they use trading view whatever whatever you use as long as you're consistent is what matters. For me, this is a new four-hour window. They broke one-hour highs. We have one-hour traders now in the market. We know there are stops down here. They work it in three pushes before engulfing, going sideways, and then moving to the low of the session and the hitting the stops. Again, uh, there's a move in that first hour for 25 plus. If you're in on the pin hammer, even if you were in chasing this move, you could have probably grabbed 10 or 15 pips but on the third push after 45 minutes understanding that they're working the high working the high working the high you need to be taking something off being at break even or getting out of the market and looking for that reversal opportunity again we go sideways prior to heading into the US session before moving a bit higher and again going back and understanding where are the one hour highs and lows every time they break a one hour high and low you're triggering other time frame traders. And knowing that they're in the market, you want to be watching the other side of that time frame to see if that market indeed is respecting those levels and staying within that, that trend or if it's weakening and hitting stops. So again, we head into the U.S. session 12 candle window. Right off the bat, big doji triggering one hour traders on the break of the highs of that hour. So again, our... our 
our hourly highs inside of there, as well as the four hour high and low, all get triggered on the pin doji before giving us an engulfment and an M structure right off the bat. And again, just understanding that when this market does that, the first place they're going to go is to the low of that range prior to the session opening. So again, we're looking at a 25 pip box. Uh, we're inside the pin of the doji is pinning up just underneath of double zeros. Uh, this market obviously has room to go. We had payrolls. We had stops at the low of Asia. We'll move this down as well as the low of London. And we'll put those in as well. So that is the low of the day for London and Asia. So obviously we have the overall low of the day and the low of London session. Payrolls bursts out, hitting stops, one push, a doji, two push, and a, bear, a bullpen hammer after stops have been hit, then an engulfment, then a third bar, a one, two, three back up, and this lower structure is fully engulfed, which again is important to understand that if you aren't prepared to take this at the low of the day after stops have been hit on a bullpen hammer. Once they engulf this lower structure and move sideways, this is still an opportunity to enter a second position and move your first one to break even because, uh, again, they've locked in that lower level and they're going to go back. First place is to the high of the session again. So they hit the stops, they hit the stops, they pull it back inside, Give a little W reversal, three push pattern engulfment for the reversal back up through the high of the day. A one push, two pushes, and then a one, two, three to the high. This is prior to the equity session opening, but again, understanding the basic setup. So for me, payroll is the golden rule is, is I just I don't do anything until they hit the stops. And and typically that's after payrolls. So payrolls will be an opportunity for them to explode the market in one direction, maybe both hitting stops. Uh, it's not, we can say that it's rigged, but if you understand that you work from the high and the low, that's what we want them to do. We want them to hit stops, let the market go into consolidation. We got three pins at the bottom of that with bullpen hammer engulfments, one, two, three, uh, after stops have been hit for a 50 pip plus move back up. They pull it back inside, work it back down inside of that range before engulfing and continuing a move back up through the high of the day and the session. We head into Monday morning and again, three things, high of the day, low of the day, the market timings, uh, major round numbers. So I'm just going to keep hammering on the fact that, you know, as much as people feel like some of that's proprietary, I'm sorry, it's been here since the beginning of time. And we talk about who's in the money. In the first hour, we get an engulfment off of 25 after a 50 pip move. Again, this is prior to us coming to the screen, but I want to know who's in the money. Where are the money traders? So this trader is in the money. The market works down to the low of the day. They may have already taken profit off. We don't know. Uh, again, the first hour auctions down. The second hour opens up and works its way down towards the low without taking out the overall low before breaking through the middle structure prior to the session opening. So again, our hourly high is above this bare uh, reversal hammer. And we have a breakout of a geometrical structure for a W. And right at the beginning of the session, we have the explosive one bar breakout. So again, a breakout trade at the beginning of the session, not only triggering one hour breakout uh, traders, but, but breaking out of that one hour bar. And we know that we have stops where the profitable traders at break even and possibly even at the high of the day where the pin was. So we have trades, uh, swing traders entering in lower level shorts with stops above those bars, maybe break even as well. And the market works up in three pushes, hitting all those stops before reversing for a 25 pip stop hunt back into traders who were long right off the bat. So again, understanding that the timing, the high low, the pattern of the trend, uh, three push patterns, M's and W's. So again, there's our M structure at the high of the day after three pushes for a 25 pip stop hunt. And then after the market hits the stop, so again, some traders were in the move for the stop hunt and you're, if you're expecting it to go to the high of the day, you're in this 
uh, and it's doing three pushes and we get into that second 15 minute candle again you're at break even the market follows through and then engulfs you're out of the trade and you're thinking short trade now 25 plus 25 down some traders sticking around longer they see the middle structure and the reversal the bullpen hammer or possibly the breakout candle following the move back up to the high again for a possibly the fill on that trades around 15 this market pushed up to 42 so not quite uh, uh, a good risk reward but again uh, understanding three pushes one push two pushes three pushes and understanding that traders who are in these big candles where are they filled because the higher they go start paying attention if they're underwater if they're chasing this move and they're underwater an example again where I talked about if you're in the market the market goes into consolidation underneath of the peak formation there's our M okay you may not be able to go to break even quite yet so you could be in this trade just after the beginning of the second hour so again we've triggered other time frame traders into the market one hour traders into the market long we know there are stops at the low of that hour the market goes into consolidation before hitting stops and pulling back and again depending on where you're filled you may have been stopped out at break even if you hadn't taken profits but also understanding that once this market drops down and we're in our third 15 minute candle you definitely need to be at break even because this market should do exactly what it did and that's capitulate in a blow off move creeping trends will end in one of two ways it will be a squeeze for a reversal explosive reversal or it will blow off in a capitulation type move three pushes and a blow off and again uh, we see the market working a creeping trend into the low we're back inside of yesterday's uh, high of the day and again when we bring this chart together again just talking about high and low timing round numbers where are the stops the pattern of the trend triggering other time frame traders into the market very very simple stuff work from the high and the low keep it simple traders and may the markets go with you looking at the pound from Friday and again we just looking for our major round numbers uh, I very rarely would ever trade the pound in the Asian session uh, but we can mark off our high and low heading into our London window we know that we're coming off of double zeros we've triggered uh, the low of the previous day prior to our London window opening and again this is a 15 minute chart but right off the bat we have the engulfment of the bullpen doji uh, and that is a short trade all day long the market uh, moved down through 50 so we we've come off of zeros into 75 and again peak formation engulfment at the end of the Asian 12 candle window they drop it down and go sideways in the engulfment into the open of the session uh, the sideways price action we've triggered other time frame traders into the market and then the breakout of the London open window so again engulfing the pin bar of the first hour we have an engulfment on the second candle of the 12 candle window as well as the London equities open this is an open drive uh, trade setup for a continuation we had a big move from Friday's close a consolidation and a continuation for a measured move uh, heading into the US session we'll look at the, the one minute chart on this as well again uh, mentioning that with the pound I would typically be looking at a one minute chart when I'm at the extremes meaning that when we're at the higher the low so as we head into our 12 candle window right at the beginning of the session the market breaks down pulls back to the first bar of the session before rolling over and giving us a micro M formation at the high of the day the market continues to work down in three pushes before pulling back for a one two three and then a third push into the open of the London session so one push two push a one two three just prior to the London candle opening and again this bull doji is the first candle of London so one push down two pushes down and a one two three into the trend which again you'll notice is a pullback into the peak formation before rolling over in the London open and gradually breaking out of the previous 
uh, hours low, triggering, again, breakout traders, pulling back, continuing the move, pulling back, and then continuing the move. When we head into our U.S. session, again, payrolls is the, uh, you know, everybody talks about payrolls. The only thing I do with payrolls is I wait for the, the news to be done. So I'm looking for, this is the classic setup. We want a consolidated range. The market payrolls blows off and hits stops. The pin, the second candle after the pin is inside, we, I draw the line on the pin. I want to see that as my low, of, my low of the day structure and the market work into that pin low and give me an opportunity to enter the market with a one bar stop. You will see this pattern over and over again. A one, two, three, a pin to the low and then a one, two, three into the pin. So the pin is our low of the day and then they go into that pin one more time, pinning through it, pin hammer. Trade the break of that candle for the long trade back. Minimum target is the high of the session, but we're looking for a measured move. It's a 25 pip box, so 50 plus pips. And again, understanding that timing window, this is the, the third minute of the third 15 minute candle. So 15 minutes, uh, again, payrolls is the uh, 8.30 New York. One, two, three blows off and hits stops before reversing triggering breakout traders, getting traders chasing the move, hitting stops on traders that are already in the market long, engulfing, and again, understanding this lower structure. Once they engulf that lower structure, that could be an opportunity for a second position. We get a bullpen hammer after the consolidation, so we could be at break even on one trade and adding a second position in. That's entirely trader's discretion, uh, but once that engulfment occurs on that lower structure, the lower structure being the one, two, three, uh, they pull back and then break out of it and go into consolidation. This could be an opportunity for a second entry. Again, the first one being a break even, uh, taking profits possibly on the first one, and then holding on, on to that second position. We have one push, two pushes, three pushes, but understanding timing wise as well. Uh, when we get into that upper structure, we see the M formation, the middle structure for the M. But in our heads, knowing that 15 minute cycles are happening with these candles and the market as we get up into the second 15 minute candle just prior to the equities market opening which happens right on the bear candle hammer we would want to be taking profits or again uh, if we're not already out possibly looking for an entry for a move back in the opposite direction the equity market opens and stop hunts back into the original trend trade so coming back to the basic setup there's our high Okay, they get traders going along right off the bat, triggering one hour time frame traders, expand the range, hit the stops, hit the stops, expand the range, pull it back inside and trend the market. And then equities, stop hunts back inside before going into consolidation to end the week. So hopefully you got some uh, value traders, basic setup, hit the stops, hit the stops, consolidate the market and then move it. Uh, that sideways consolidation will typically be inside of the highs and lows. We look for round numbers, market timings, keep it simple. It's that simple. It's been around since the beginning of markets. It's going to continue to be here every single week, every single session. Master those setups. Have a great Hi, trading traders, session. Hi, traders. Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. If you haven't done so, please head over to my website at stacyburketrading.com. I create updates on almost a daily basis, and I would love for you to receive them. Just click on the blog. If you want to enter your name and your email address, I'll send you my free audio program, The 7-Step Daily Routine for High Performance Traders. This is essential knowledge for all traders in all markets, and this is for helping traders to master the market with discipline, confidence, and a winning mindset. I appreciate all your feedback and comments. As always, traders, stay disciplined, and may the markets go with you.